Hey guys, I'm back, and I just had to take a little bit of a sabbatical from Elden Ring. But I promise I won't go out for a pack of Salem's again without telling you guys. Now though, I got you guys that video that I said I was making like a month ago. But before I get into that video, I need to explain just what area we're doing it on, and that's the Altus Plateau, or this highlighted area on the map. So everything inside this wall is off limits, and I might use it for another video, but I don't know. With that out of the way, we can now get to 5 things you missed in the Altus Plateau. Dragon Ball Blessing is the land between's most generic form of Viagra mixed with Robitussin. It helps you get hard and increases your resistance to everything from brain hemorrhages to falling asleep. The only downside is that now you're going to be more vulnerable to static electricity. Being more serious, Dragon Bolt Blessing gives you tier 2 hardness, which can allow you to avoid having your attacks rudely interrupted by the people you're trying to kill. I do want to mention some false advertising that comes with this incantation, and that's in the description as it says that only those loved by dragons can survive using this incantation. So FromSoft, where's my Dragusi? The Bloody Halsey is the second of two dynasty weapons and one of four base game heavy thrusting swords. It's probably not as noob friendly as the Reduvia is, but it actually has a really cool unique Ash of War, Dynas Finesse which functions a lot like Bloodhound's finesse, where there's an initial attack and then an automatic dodge with 20 iframes. But in this case, for some reason, the initial attack doesn't do any damage. But then you can follow up with three additional attacks, which each cost 7 FP. So for a full combo, it's 26 FP. Five for the initial spin, and then seven for each of the three follow-ups. You can get the Bloody Healthy from the Sanguine Noble in the Rite Blood Ruins. Being a dynasty weapon, it does come with a good amount of bleed buildup, which is at 55 per hit. Perfumes are an aspect of Elden Ring that I think are really niche, as they end up getting introduced pretty late into the game. I personally don't use them that much either, but that's because of my genetic predisposition to hoarding. I always craft them because I think like, oh if I ever get into a tough situation I'll use them but I just never end up using them. My personal favorite is the Uplifting Aromatic, which is found in the Perfumer's Cookbook, number one. You get the cookbook from the Perfumer's Ruin in this here Dark Souls 3 chest. You may be thinking, but isn't the Blood Boil Aromatic better? And it kinda is, as it provides 30% more damage instead of the Uplifting Aromatic's 10%, but the Blood Boil Aromatic increases damage taken by 25%. So much like communism, it's only better in theory. A damage increase is not the only buff provided by the uplifting aromatic, as it also gives you a 90% damage reduction for one hit, kind of like the opaline bubble tier. So if you're bad like me, then you can use this to avoid high damage attacks that you struggle to dodge. There are a number of interactable paintings across the lands between and they always correspond to a unique item, but not everything unique is necessarily good. That's the case with the champion song painting in the heart bow, which is somehow both the last short bow available, but also the worst. One thing it does have going for it is that ironically the bow... One thing it does have going for it is its low requirements, which ironically the bow with the lowest requirements is fashioned out of a skilled instrument. Where do you get it though? And that's a bit of a two-part process. First, you have to interact with the painting inside the shady castle. Then, if you take a good look at the painting, you might be able to figure out where the location is. But if you can't, don't worry, because I'll just tell you where it's at. You find it over here on this ledge near the rampart side path side of grace. One last little thing, and that's that every arrow you fire makes a little harp sound, which is hilarious, at least for 10 minutes before you get completely tired of it and then use the bow as kindling for the round table fireplace. Is it unethical to unalive someone and then force them into eternal servitude? Many have asked this, but thankfully, once they're dead, they don't have any rights anymore. I'm talking about killing your local doctor, cremating them, and then summoning them for free healthcare. 
And no, I'm not talking about that loser ass finger maiden puppet, but the smelling salts doctor, perfumer Trisha. She is by far the best support summon in the game. How do we employ her though? We need to break into her current place of work, which is a hospice center near the perfumer's ruins. Make sure to bring two Chuck E. Cheese tokens though, so we can make our way inside. Once we're in, we'll just run past all the terminally ill patients until we get to the boss room. I like it, Kudgy. And now it's time to proceed with our plan. With her now deceased and in our possession, we can now summon her to help us because we're more important than all these losers she was helping here. Let me know how many of these you knew about in the comment section and if you'd like to see another video like this on a different location. It would also be nice if you left a like and subscribed if you'd like to see more from me, but just watching is enough for me. So thanks for the support and have a great rest of your day.